Hi everybody, Jill here. Welcome to my channel. We're going to be doing a makeup video today. I haven't done one of these for you guys in so, so long and I'm very excited to get going on this look. And before I do that, I want to give you a little sneak peek so you can decide if this is a look that you would like to stick around for. take a sip of my coffee I like lots of foam as you can see in my coffee take a sip of yours or your tea get comfy because you know what makeup really should be a relaxing time of your day no matter what time of day that is you should find a place where you can sit down and really relax and just not feel rushed yeah, you know, I really think that putting your makeup on should be more of an enjoyable ritual than anything. It should be relaxing. It should be a time not to look at yourself in the mirror and think and say negative things about yourself. It needs to be a very positive, uplifting, accepting of yourself and really work on that because for most of you, it's how you start your day. This channel is about aging, and it's about accepting it, embracing it, and supporting it along the way. You know, it doesn't have to be a negative connotation, but really, we need to accept the fact that we're all aging, and many of us have a harder time with that than others. I, not, I try not to look in the mirror and really beat myself up when I see that my face is doing its thing and aging. So, yes, I'm definitely going to support my aging skin as I look in my mirror here the best that I possibly can and feed it the best nutrients both topically and internally as I can and really support not just my face but my whole body. And this last year in 2021 was probably the most stressful time in my entire life thus far. And yes, I definitely can see that stress in the way I aged in my face. I, I, I definitely can. You know, I definitely can see where this, this last year, um, I can see it. I can see it on my face. So sitting here in front of you today is gonna be wonderful for me. It's very, brings me joy. And definitely spending time with myself and giving me that respect in that I, I wanna feel, I wanna put on a, a full face of makeup today. I wanna feel good. And yes, I do feel better when I am made up. Definitely. I'm not going to lie. I definitely do. I think most of us do. And that's good. That's great. You know, do that. Do those things. Don't forget about that self-care. And putting on your face is part of that. And I'm here. And part of my, part of my, a big part of my message on this channel is to not just allow yourself as you age to forget about yourself in that sort of beauty part of it because it makes you feel better. So I hope that I can inspire you to not give up on that. There's makeup in every budget. There's good makeup in every budget. And just get yourself the very basics and start playing again. And I hope that you'll visit my channel often and get a little bit of technique under your belt because it does change, especially if you haven't put makeup on in many years. It is different. I think I have had to tweak my technique in how I apply my makeup and, and even sort of my mindset in my expectations as well as the makeup itself. You know, I look for different things now that I am over 50. <laughs> so this year I am 56. I'll be 57 in the fall, but that's way off. We're not even gonna think about that right now. So currently I'm 56 and I embrace my age. I actually don't mind the wrinkles I'm getting. I, I actually think they're kind of pretty. All right, so let's get going on this look here today. We're gonna start with one of my favorite foundations and it is a drugstore foundation. It's the L'Oreal 24 Hour Infallible. This is in color 202. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put some of this right on this baby. So this foundation is, is really nice. It is probably a medium, medium coverage. It's not heavy. It's not gonna cover every single thing. I have a lot of 
pigmentation on my skin. It's not going to cover that up, but I'm not about that. I'm not about really going hard and heavy with my foundation to cover everything up. And that's mostly because I think the end product just looks, it's, it gives a look that isn't what I'm shooting for. You know, I want more of a natural finish, something that will even out my uneven skin tone and sort of give more of a photo finish look rather than a coverage perfection sort of look. Does that make any sense at all? Still using this. This is the Born This Way multi-use concealer in color snow. I do like to bring you know, my concealer down here, kind of next to my nose to just brighten this area up right in here. So I do like to kind of take it straight down and to the side here. I don't like putting a whole lot in this area. So one thing that happened last year for me is I really started to obsess and absolutely fell in love with creams. I wish I could whip out something new for you guys, you know, that I have not used thus far in a makeup video. I guess it's not happening this time because I'm going to be using my Patrick Ta bronzer. This right here, there is a hard sort of lid on that, which I love. And you can see that I do use this quite a bit. It is a cream, this is a powder. I don't use this as much. I use this in the summer, but this I use all year round. Got a brush here. I'm just gonna load that baby up. And while this is considered a bronzing step, and it is, I have very fair skin and I've just grown to really like kind of doing this to the outskirts, you know, of, of my face. I think it does warm me up a little bit, even in the winter. So I have continued to do it and it's part of my kind of daily makeup routine now. So I'm going to just start here in the forehead. I do have, you know, kind of a taller forehead. So this, this kind of helps with that, but I think even if I didn't, I would still like to do this step because again, it just sort of warms up the perimeter of my face and I kind of like that. So I'm going to just kind of go in little circles. A good cream should be super easy to blend. And you know how I'm just obsessed with sort of blurring those lines, no matter what the application is. And therefore everything at the end just looks kind of from within. There's no stops and starts and and that's always kind of what I shoot for each and every time so working with creams uh, makes that a little easier for sure I'm gonna do a little contouring with this this cream also is matte there's no luminosity to it so it works wonderful as a creamy contour this is a bit pricey but honestly it's lasting me forever and it's such a multi-use product that I am thrilled with it and uh, I highly recommend. I'm going to bring this just the littlest bit in under here. Here's my cheekbone here. I'm just going to do it right in there. Now. I'm going to continue to use this a little as a contour and I'm going to bring it here under my chin and down into my, my, my neck there back here behind the ear. And I'm going to just kind of carve out a little bit better jawline there. I've mentioned this before, but you don't want to just go under the jaw because see how we have a little bit of thing going on here. Um, I actually want to, you know, create that line and go over the part that's starting to dip down ever so gently. So I want to go over that and then bring it down. So we kind of give it a new line, you know, the, the line it used to have maybe even five years ago. Creams are so subtle and that's why I love them. It's almost impossible to overdo a cream, um, you know, and 
it's it's kind of foolproof. Have fun experimenting with those. I think you're going to have fun. And uh, it might open up a whole new appreciation for the way that your makeup, you know, can look. So when working with creams, you want to do them before you put any powders on. So I'm going to jump to the blush right now. This has become my absolute favorite cream blush. I'll show it to you guys in a minute. It's, it's the color Rosette and it's a mineral fusion cream blush. gorgeous it sort of becomes what I need it to and I'm not sure how it does that it is just this beautiful color with a bit of gold in it it, it it's wonderful all year round and it has been my absolute go-to for sure now I do set it with a similar sort of powder blush I know that's weird but there's something about using this again that just makes it look like the colors coming from within rather than just sitting on top so I use this once again, I'm just going to take it, load it right here. Now I'm going to just start patting it on right where I want it, which is kind of right in here and right in here. I don't want to go up too high because I, I want this to, I'm going to put a little bit of highlighter up here and I don't want to put it down too low, just kind of right in the apples of the cheeks and sort of straight back right on top of the cheekbone not on top this way but like right on top of my cheekbone all the way back do you see how oh it's just gorgeous it's gorgeous this next one i dropped actually it made me so mad there's still plenty of product left but it was brand new when i did it it's a catrice blush and it is gorgeous Again, there's some gold in here and it isn't flat, beautiful. It pairs super nice with that color that we just put on, that creamy blush. I go light with it and I just sort of set, if you will. I set the cream that I put on and I just go real light with it because I love the way the cream just kind of comes from within it doesn't have an overwhelming amount of pigment to it um, if, especially if you go with a brush kind of like this and you just go really light with it it's just a beautiful pairing they're very similar and then after after I do that by the way this is an oil infused blush it's the only color that they offer it in and it is it's such a great find I love it so then I'm gonna go ahead and take a clean side of this and just kind of pat that Again, I'm not wanting any lines of demarcation. Time for a sip of the coffee. All right. I was going to do something, but I'm not now. We're going to go straight to the eyes. Before I do that, I am going to kind of brush through with my little spoolie here, get, you know, any foundation out of there and or whatever I've put on at that point. I like to just kind of do that at that point. We're going to be working out of a tried and true gorgeous palette. Many of you may have it, which is why I decided, you know what? I use this a lot. Let's go ahead and do this look with this. This is the Too Faced Natural Eyes palette. I use this one quite a bit. So it has, it needs to be cleaned up. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the all over wash. I absolutely love this color here going into this one right here again excuse my dirty palette this is a beautiful wash color it's just this buttery sort of vanilla yellow and that is brightening in and of itself it's matte so it really is a beautiful wash color and I'm just going to kind of tap and move it along here. I like doing an all over wash color first. That's one of those sort of things that I've had to tweak as I've aged. And it acts as just this beautiful foundation that my other colors can blend upon the top of. And, and it just makes the whole process a lot easier. 
I'm going to sort of start building a little bit of that depth and I'm going to go into this color right here. So I'm going to go ahead and pat this in right here. Not all the way up to the brow, but pretty high. And I am going to bring it up right up and through here. And I'm going to use it to ever so gently come down and contour the nose. And I'll bring it up on this side. And I will probably do a little tiny bit more contouring with the next color I'm going to use. This is still a matte color. Again, this is from the neutral palette and really these neutral looks are my favorite. I tend to wear more of a neutral look on the daily basis. And the, the great thing about a neutral eye look is that they are going to look nice no matter what color your eyes are, no matter what you're wearing. So they're just kind of a no brainer when you don't feel like trying to figure out in a, you know, your eye look that day. Um, it's just a, it really is kind of a no brainer if they truly are neutral. This is a beautiful neutral palette. All right, next color. All right, so now this is a little darker. And I'm going to kind of start taking this more to my mobile lid on the outside and more kind of in my natural crease, but bringing it up a bit. So I'm, I'm not going to bring this one as high as I did the first. I'm going to load up again. And again, I'm going to kind of start patting it more here in the middle, bringing it to the outside of the mobile lid, keeping this angle very cognizant still of the angle of my brush so I don't accidentally put too much down in here or any at all. If I do, I always kind of take, you know, something and kind of wipe it away. And I'm going to lay it in my natural crease and because this brush is a little big, that's great because it's going to still deposit it up a little high. And then I'm going to look and, you know, I might take what's left on here, which is not much, and I'll do a little bit more contouring with it. We're going to go, we're going to go into this one. So I'm pressing, really tapping, turning the brush, getting the pigment off, and I'm really just concentrating on the outside of my mobile lid and I'm just tapping and pressing, tapping and pressing. Way too much crepiness and movement these days with my eyelids. This is how I have to lay that color on. And also it helps to eliminate quite a bit any fallout that can happen. But definitely tap off your brush really well before you even do this. Tapping, tapping, being careful not to deposit any color down in this area. We are framing this eyelid at this point, you know, and I just love this look. Again, tapping, tapping, setting it right in the outer part of this lid and a little here in my natural crease. Uh, almost halfway at this point in a bit of a sort of diagonal line is where that pigment landed and that's where I want it. I'm going to reload and I'm going to even darken this up here get it right into that natural crease all about halfway pressing pressing good good all right i'm going to wipe this off right here on my terry cloth towel and i'm going to take those edges and i'm just going to kind of Blur them out. Wipe again. And again, I'm going to soften those edges. Wipe again. Soften. 
You don't have to obsess over the blending and the blending and the moving and the blending and the blending. I'm telling you, that is great for the younger kids and even for those in their 30s, maybe even early 40s. But I can't do that. It, it would be skipping. It would be just this huge mess. Uh, so I have to go in with much more precision in how I lay my color down. And then I'll go with a lighter touch and, you know, start blending it out. I'm going to go with sort of a lighter, smokier color here. Well, we'll smoke it out ourselves. But I'm going to go ahead and go under the lash line with this one. There's, there's a product I want to share with you guys that I'm loving, but I have found that I have to apply it a certain way, and uh, I'm going to share that with you guys here in a minute. This color is, is really subtle, but subtlety is okay. It's kind of our friend, you know, as we get older, I think. All right, now I'm going to go in with that darker color that we used, and I'm going to use the same brush. I wiped it off. I'm going to sort of meld the top and the bottom together with this. I'm not going to go all the way to the corner. I'm just going to take it a little bit on that outer edge and I'm going to tap it and just kind of bring those colors together. There's one more thing that I want to do and that's because there is the littlest bit of sort of like peachiness Oh, you're hearing my dog at the door. There's a little bit of peachy pink going on in this thing that I'm wearing. So I'm going to dip my ring finger in this color right here. So I'm just going to take my ring finger and do that. I'll blow on it just a little bit. And I'm going to put this right at the center of my mobile lid and bring it up. It is really pretty. Very pretty. This palette is gorgeous. At least I think so. It's kind of right up my alley. Perfect. Gorgeous palette. Absolutely beautiful. I didn't tight line. I didn't waterline. I am going to curl my eyelashes and then I'm going to put some mascara on. So let's go ahead and do that now. You know, today I'm going to use my tried and true. I really love this mascara. It's the Too Faced Better Than Sex. I have found a couple others that I really like. One is the Physician's Formula Killer Curves, I think is what it's called. And the other one is the Air Volume Mascara. I believe that's by L'Oreal. Those are also fabulous. Before I get to the brows, I want to share with you this product that I am really learning to love. And there was a bit of a learning curve for me. First, let me show it to you. So this is a brightener for under the eyes. And for those of you who are like me and you have quite a bit of crepiness under here, you know, the tissue you can move around and it sort of sticks there. Something this heavy can be an issue. And you definitely can't put this all underneath your eye. I mean, <laughs> let me tell you, I've experimented and you can't put this all underneath your eye. You have to really be specific where it's going to go and you really got to pat it in and sort of less is more with this but it is subtle and powerful i think it is beautiful and it is a wonderful thing to experiment with and i'm going to go in here and i i find that i have to use i have to use my finger for this i can't use a brush or any sort of applicator because i have to use my body heat that i get from my finger to sort of get it to melt into my skin there. So I loaded it up. That's that's actually quite a bit. This is going to last a while. And um, I'm going to just put it right here in the center. I'm going to use that and I'm going to put it right here as well. Just right here in the center. And I'm going to tap it in. I'm going to tap it in and I'm going to bring it right in here. Why do I do this after I put my makeup and everything on well because I don't want any fallout I'm going to load up this just a little bit more I don't want any fallout to get on this I want this to be a final sort of touch to my look do you see how it's brightening already it is amazing 
But the downside to this is, is you cannot put powders over it. It's going to negate the amazing sort of effect that it's giving us if we cover that up and powder it and set it. It's one of those products we can't do that with. So really keep it to that part that we want to brighten only. We don't need to put it anywhere else. Just right in here. And that's it. Now, I do recommend doing this with a five times mirror, and I'll tell you why. Because you want to make sure that once you kind of get, get it where you want it, and it's kind of that look that you want, wipe off your pinkies again. And now really take that mirror and make sure you're pressing it in and moving around that crepiness so it's kind of in there. And that way it's not going to settle in that creasiness and get too noticeably in there. <laughs> okay. And that's why you want less is more, but you want enough to give you the effect. But if you put it on too thick and heavy, it is going to settle in all that crepiness and it's going to look awful. So there's just this sort of in-between middle ground where you want to be. And that's it. I'm not going to set it or anything. That is also why I did not waterline or tightline. Because through the day, that stuff does end up transferring. It can end up puddling in the corner of the eye. And then, you know, disturb this brightening thing that we have going on here. So... I didn't do that. I want to eliminate that as much as I can. Now, at this point, you can tactfully set your concealer if you so choose. You know, if you want to go in and set it right here in the outer part, take a little bit on even a beauty blender, something like this. You could put some powder on this. You can get the powder on and then set it, you know, right up to where you put that brightener. I have experimented with this. And I have worn it several times all day. It does a really great job. It really does. And it stays there. It's tricky, but once you figure it out and you get that technique down, it is a definite win, I think. And uh, you still can set, just again, you gotta be kind of precise with it, press it in. And then after you get it on there and you've pressed it in where you want it, take a brush kind of like this, wipe away the excess. And then, you know, you, you're good all through here. You're good. And you shouldn't have, you know, any issues with, you know, the reason why we set our concealer down there. <laughs> now we're going to do the brows. So my brows today, I'm going to be doing my favorite powder, which is the BDB Billion Dollar Brows. This I'll, put, I'll, I'll put all of this, everything that I'm using today, I will put down below in the description box with links if I can find them. So I'm not going to do this step by step because I know this video so far is probably a long one, but I will just continue to keep the camera rolling and uh, as I put on my brows. After I put my powder on, I like to use a spoolie at that point and soften those lines up and really get down to the skin and blur any actual sort of lines that I may have accidentally created. This side is, is the trouble side. This is the one that I really struggle with because I have less actual hairs brow hairs here. So I have bald patches and everything. So I usually, you know, if I accidentally brush too much away with that spoolie on this side, I might have to go in like I do now and just kind of uh, add a little more color right to the skin, actually, because I am missing quite a few brows. One of the challenging things about you know, the makeup application as you get older is for me, I want my brows to look as natural as I possibly can. Yes, they're gonna look I'm sort of, you know, made up, yes, because I use all of these products, but I want to try to fight that as much as I can. I don't want my brows to look like I press them on, tattooed them on, or, 
you know, just sort of stuck something on there and just put color on and that's it. I want them to look as natural as I can. And this, this next product I think is key to that for me. And it is a brow gel that is colored. It's by Benefit and I love it. So yes, I have powder on right now and it is down to the skin really. I want to now accentuate the hairs, the brow hairs that I actually have, and that gives a more realistic look, I think, a more natural look to the brow. The other thing that this does is I do have some pure white brow hairs that I don't want to tweeze because I need them. Uh, this will color that and, and I can utilize them now and they're not going to be stark white anymore. So I recommend a tinted brow gel for sure. It has been a game changer for me. Don't be too alarmed if you get some gloppiness. You, we're going to use a clear brow gel after this with a nice applicator that will comb that right out. If it gets a little too dark, if it gets a little too heavy in areas, that next step is going to deal with that. Again, this side is... The bane of my existence. I do have a little blotchiness there, but all right. So this is a clear brow gel. This is the 24-hour brow gel by Benefit, and uh, I love the applicator on this. It really separates all the hairs, and this is what's going to get rid of any gloppiness that you may have accidentally <clears throat> placed on your brows with that brow gel which you will get better at as you use it, but it tends to happen too as it gets a little older. So this step will help you with that. Okay, we have finished the brows now. I said I wasn't gonna talk you through that and I ended up doing that. For those of you that are still here with me, say hi down there and say, yep, Jill, I just finished watching you put on your brows. I'm still with you. I would love to know. As is the case many times, I'm looking at myself and I'm thinking, okay, the eyes are done, but I want to just do a little something else. It, it still needs a little bit more depth, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and use this color that we, we did earlier. And I'm just gonna sort of bring this, give it a little bit more depth. I'm gonna make it just a little more darker. I'm just gonna add more pigment right through here. This is hard to overdo in this palette because these colors are very soft. So, and yet they, they do have a good amount of payout. It's not that, but they're just nice neutral colors. So they are a wonderful beginner palette. Or if you haven't played with makeup in a while, I think this would be a great first purchase and it's a great investment because it's gonna go with any eye color, whatever clothes you're wearing, hence why neutrals are really popular, I think. All right, I'm happy now. I'm gonna go ahead and get some hair on now and we are going to figure out what it is we're gonna do with our lips. So I'll be right back. All right, let's go ahead and do our lips now. I'm gonna do a technique that I do a lot now. I absolutely love it. And it's great if you have thin lips. And I've done it in a few of my makeup tutorials, actually. I'm going to contour my lips. And I like using a very matte, taupey color, very light, taupey color. Don't want anything too dark. And I'm very fair, so that can be a little challenging. But I did land on this color by Makeup Geek. It's an eyeshadow, and it's called Beach Please. So I'm going to create an illusion that I have fuller lips than I do without that look of overlining because I don't particularly like that look. I, I've never really overlined my lips. I just don't like the way it looks. So this has been a lovely technique. I'm going to start right at the center underneath my lower lip and I want to create a hollow there. And I'm going to really work at blending that out. It's very subtle, but again, subtlety is our friend and it can be very powerful. So our lip is going to look like it's kind of curling over just, you know, by creating that hollow underneath. I'm going to dip just the tips back in. I'm going to brush it off here on my thumb and I'm going to take this 
almost to the very end of my lip, but not quite. And I am lining underneath my natural lip line. Now at this point, I am going to not bring it all the way to, to the outside of my lower lip line because that is going to really accentuate the downward turn of our lip there. So I'm going to tuck that in with this color. And now I am brushing that on top of my natural lip itself in the corner. And we can do that too. We can just skip this. You know, we don't have to use this color at this point. We can line the lips with it. But the reason why with a lip liner, which I will show you, the reason why I do like to use this is because it's going to stay there where a lip liner may fade over the day. This tends to not. Taking the pinky now clean, and I'm gonna go over that. Really blur it out. It's gonna look a little funny. It's funny because you know it's there. You know what you're doing. So, you know, even when it's all done, you're like, I don't know. But it's because you are doing the process. The illusion is real. <laughs> I'm not overlining quite as much here on the top. A little bit I am. Now my lips, you know, they tend to get very thin in there and because of age, you know, they're falling and tucking in here at the bottom. So I want to now take this and overline here at the side. Again though, I'm not going to take that line and bring it all the way. I am going to tuck it in. It seems counterintuitive, but you can bring this right on top of your lip. And then I'm going to tuck it in. Do you see that? And blend it, soften it, all right remember blending softening key. Now I'm going to take my favorite lip liner of all time my Charlotte Tilbury iconic nude that's getting a little small. Now I'm not going to line my whole lip with this okay but what I am going to do is I'm going to sort of reinforce what we did here in the corner. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to tuck it in and I'm not overlining at all, tucking it in and bringing it this way. Just the corners. can even color it in. Two reasons why I'm using a lip pencil like this and I like these Charlotte Tilbury pencils because they're dry. Some of you may like creamier lip pencils but for me I need a fence. I need something that's not so creamy that it's just going to go away or it's not going to hold in you know the lipstick. So I do like drier lip pencils. This one's a happy ground because I can still you know run it over my skin and it's not super dry but it also isn't creamy at all and I like that. I need it to hold in my lipstick. Okay, then I'm going to take my pinky again and kind of, kind of soften that. Sorry. All right, now let's go ahead and go back into this because this is a multi-use product. So we use this on our cheeks, right? This is the Mineral Fusion Rosette color and it is gorgeous. I'm just gonna take my ring finger here. I'm gonna tap on this and I am gonna put this right on my lips. What it's gonna do is it's gonna tie in this whole look. 
and yet it's uh, a be beautiful subtle color it's to me the color of youth i don't know it's got a little bit of pink in it and it's got some gold and it's just beautiful and it feels great on the lips all right so we've added now a little bit of color to our lips I am now going to take the VIP by Makeup Geek. This is a foiled, sort of thicker lip gloss. I like using this because it doesn't move quite as much as an actual lip gloss will, because everything will collect in the corner of my mouth. And I'm going, I'm only going to use this in the center of my lips. So just here and here. And I am going to kick it up. I'm going to kick it up because I don't want any of those things to create an actual visual fence on my lips. So I want to sort of feather this up to where we did our contouring. I still like to I still like to kind of soften all right we have one more thing that we're gonna be doing to finalize this really pretty soft look we're gonna be using my favorite highlighter for mature skin this is the buxom wonderlust highlighter it is my favorite for, for mature skin thus far it is definitely my favorite highlighter discovered this last year I like it because it's not over the top. I like it because it's not pure white. It is just this really pretty natural looking highlighter that is this perfect color. So I'm gonna get my little highlighter foofy brush here, which is this one here. I'm gonna dip into that. And I'm gonna just put this now right sort of on the top of my cheekbones there. High, pretty high, not under my eyes, but pretty high. This is not an underrated step at all, I think, with mature skin and doing your makeup. I this is not underrated when it comes to the finishing of this look or any look. So this is a, a pretty big piece of the package, this highlighter. It's just that final little bit. So here we have it guys this is the final look today i hope you enjoyed this i hope you picked up on a few new things if you watch my tutorials and all right i'm going to sign off for now please consider subscribing if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you can be notified the minute i upload new content i will see you guys very soon in my next video bye bye